Hello, my name's Julian Savalescu. I'm the Chen Su Lan Centennial Chair in Medical Ethics at the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine. I'm also the Director of the Centre for Biomedical Ethics. Um, it's a great pleasure to be with you today, and I'd like to talk about reproductive ethics, and in particular, the ability to select the characteristics of our children, which is one of the most provocative topics in, in bioethics. So there are a number of ways in which the characteristics of our children can be selected. Um, these uh, involve prenatal testing, which um, is either non-invasive prenatal testing, chorionic villus sampling, amniocentesis or ultrasound, which um, can allow selection at about 11 weeks, 10 to 11 weeks uh, of gestation and followed by termination of pregnancy. Secondly, there's in vitro um, fertilization, producing a number of embryos, uh, often say eight to 10 embryos, and uh, genetically testing these embryos with what used to be called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, uh, now is called um, um, pre-implantation pre genetic testing, PGT. Um, there's no need for termination of pregnancy, but this does uh, often result in the, the discarding of spare embryos. Uh, this can be done um, uh, incidentally as a, as, as a part of in, in vitro fertilization for infertility, or it can be done uh, intentionally as, as a way of, of selecting characteristics uh, in, in future children. It's also possible to test gametes, sperm or eggs. This has been done uh, as a method of sex selection, which doesn't involve either embryo or fetal destruction. So um, apart from gamete selection, these methods um, involve the destruction of early human life, either, either embryos or fetuses. So it's worth just briefly touching upon the issue um, of the moral status of human life. Uh, so Generally, moral status um, acknowledges that certain beings have interests and those interests need to be respected. Um, we don't think that smashing a rock uh, involves moral wrong, whereas uh, killing a cat or a dog or indeed a human being involves a moral wrong because it destroys a being with an interest in continuing to live. Now what um, grounds moral status is a highly contested topic. Um, and so just to, to backtrack and, and discuss what happens in, in early human life uh, and to talk about when uh, different uh, people, um, different moral views ascribe moral status, we need to just do a little bit of reproductive biology. So um, human life begins typically um, when a sperm enters an egg to create a zygote, a single cell, um, and that cell divides into two, then four, then eight, then 16, and so on into the billions of, of cells that, that compose a, a baby and, and a human being. So in those first few cell divisions, up until eight cells, the, the, the embryo uh, is or the, the embryo is totipotent. The cells are totipotent. They can continue, they can be, one can be taken off and create uh, an identical replica. That's what happens when identical twins are formed. At about 14 days uh, after uh, fertilization, um, that capacity of, of cells to split and, and create twins or triplets or quadruplets is lost, and the beginnings of early organs. Um, uh, become apparent, in particular the primitive streak forms which will ultimately create the, the nervous system, the brain and spinal cord and peripheral nerves. So 14 days is often seen to be an important point in early human life. The uh, embryo at that point continues to develop and begins to develop um, primitive organs which then mature. At around 18 to 20 weeks after fertilization, uh, the, the, at this point, the fetus is able um, to experience its thought pain uh, and, and has some very rudimentary conscious experience. Of course, nothing sophisticated, no advanced cognitive capacities, but it is able to, to at that point, experience pain. At around um, 22 to 23 weeks of, of 
after um, fertilization, the fetus is capable of being kept alive uh, outside of the woman's body. This is called viability. Um, and that has progressively come down over the years as neonatal intensive care has, uh, has progressed. Indeed, today, there are various forms of keeping life alive outside of the normal human uterus and with, in, in an artificial womb or what's called ectogenesis. Uh, so at about 18 to 20 weeks, again, the first fetal movements um, occur, which for some, such as the early Catholic Church, were seen to be uh, morally significant. And at about 40 weeks after, 37 to 40 weeks after fertilization, the baby is typically born uh, at term. Uh, and at some time after birth, the, uh, around six to 12 months, the uh, early infant acquires more advanced cognitive capacities such as uh, the beginnings of self-consciousness. That is the idea that uh, it exists across time and is able to form more complex uh, relationships with, with other human beings in the world around. So different um, uh, moral views ascribe uh, different ethical significance to these moral or these, um, these landmarks in reproductive development. So for example, um, the Catholic Church uh, says that from the very beginning uh, of, of fertilization, once a unique uh, life is created, um, that life has full moral status and it's wrong to, to destroy even embryos, um, let alone fetuses. Uh, there are you know, a number of, of objections to this view. One is at this point it's, it's simply a cell um, and, and the embryo is about one-tenth the size of a pinhead. It doesn't experience anything and it's difficult to see the difference between that cell and, say, a skin cell. Skin cells are regularly destroyed. Um, so what, what's often appealed to is the concept of potentiality, that the embryo has a different potential to develop into a human being like you or me, um, in, in, and, and a skin cell doesn't. However, we now know with cloning that every cell, or nearly every cell in our body has the potential to develop into uh, an entire human being under the right conditions. So um, it's difficult to see, again, why this potential uh, you know, invests significant moral status. And indeed, in, in other areas, potential to um, become something does not mean that at that point that entity should be treated as if it were already that thing. For example, an acorn has the potential to be an oak tree, but it's it does, isn't, it, it's not treated the same as a, a hundred-year-old oak. Or indeed, um, you know, a prince has the potential to become a, a king, but doesn't have the rights of, of a king. So the potential view has uh, a number of problems, as, as do all of the lines that are used to, to ascribe moral status. Um, different religions ascribe um, moral status at different points in human development. For example, Judaism, uh, six weeks after uh, fertilization is seen as morally significant. Um, as I mentioned, the Catholic Church historically ascribed significance to quickening when the, the baby, baby's movements are first perceived, and that was at 18 to 20 weeks, and that was seen to be um, uh, signifying the, the ensoulment of the fetus or the entering of the soul. Uh, some people believe that 20 weeks, uh, that when consciousness begins, or 22 to 24 weeks, when viability occurs, uh, holds special significance, and in many places the law on abortion changes uh, around that time. Others have argued that uh, birth uh, represents uh, an important entry into a moral community, um, but again, it's hard to see why being inside or outside uh, of a uterus uh, makes a difference to the moral status of that entity. And most radically, uh, philosoph philosophers like Peter Singer and Michael Tooley have, have argued that moral status doesn't begin until self-consciousness begins. That is, that the entity can uh, form desires for its own existence across time 
and that doesn't begin until after birth. And controversially, um, that argument uh, implies that infanticide, uh, at least of the early human infant, is similar to abortion. So we can't settle you know, in, in this short talk which of these views is correct, but clearly which view is accepted will influence um, the, the, the view of whether um, genetic selection is permissible. Um, so for example, those views that hold that, um, for example, uh, moral status begins at fertilization will rule out all forms of genetic selection, both of embryos or fetuses. Um, the view taken by the influential Warnock Committee uh, in the United Kingdom uh, that held that 14 days is important because at that point um, the beginnings of uh, the nervous system uh, have, have occurred and, and uh, twinning is no longer possible mean that destruction of the embryo before 14 days is permissible but it's more problematic after 14 days. Often people hold a gradualist view that says moral status uh, increases as pregnancy increases. The, the, the problem with this view is that it's, it's hard to uh, articulate how much moral status um, should be ascribed and, and how wrong genetic selection is at different, um, at ge different gestations. So uh, for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to assume, which most Western countries do, is that um, that uh, termination of pregnancy is permissible and that uh, destruction of embryos is permissible uh, and, and that uh, we can uh, engage in certain forms of genetic selection. Um, importantly, pre-implantation uh, genetic um, diagnosis or genetic testing um, does not require abortion. Um, however, it does require um, both IVF and uh, testing of, of the um, early, early human embryo. Um, so both pre-implantation genetic diagnosis or testing and prenatal testing can be used to test for abnormality of, cro of chromosomes such as um, causes Down syndrome or trisomy 18, a more severe version of um, genetic abnormality, or single gene disorders such as cystic fibrosis or thalassemia, um, also gender. Um, and, and today, uh, we can also test not just single genes, but, um, but a number of, of genetic markers of future disease or indeed um, future human characteristics. Um, such as intelligence, height, uh, predisposition to obesity, uh, personality, and so on. This is called polygenic testing as opposed to single gene testing. So um, these tests can be used not only to detect um, diseases, they can also be used to predict certain traits in, in future children. Um, abilities, talents, uh, limitations, and obstacles that, that children will face uh, in their development in virtue of their genetics. 